Hello, it is two seconds in and you're getting it in Becca already. I have never said hello like that in my life. It's hello, hello, no, hello, hello, how did I even, how? It's Saturday the 21st of September, <laughs> November, and it is the start of the Book Hibernation Readathon. This readathon is hosted by Simon from Savage Reads and Tom from Tom Reads Things and there are a few different prompts, I think there's about seven in total and I have a six book TBR. I think what I'm going to do is, because I've got so many books on my TBR, I'm going to start with the longest one and probably the one that's most intimidating. I say that purely because it's been hyped up so much that when books are hyped up they really make me anxious because then I'm like, does it live up to the hype or...? Anyway, it is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and this covers the prompt of a book with mystery or secret or vanish in the title. This is about twin sisters who live in a southern black community and um, they run away at the age of 16 and 40 years later they are leading very different lives. One of them is passing for white so her life is now completely different from her sister's and it's how their lives intersect and things that have happened through their lives so I'm really really looking forward to this one but like I said I am really intimidated. Hello it is Monday and I have just finished work and I am so tired. I was working on Saturday morning but Sunday... Are you done? Domino, come here. I, 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 I. <sighs> Start again. So Sunday I had the entire day off and I took full advantage. Like, I stayed in my pyjamas, I just read, I played The Sims. It was great. So, reading update, I read and finished Creativity by John Cleese. I did really enjoy this. I gave this four stars. It says that it's a short guide to getting your creativity back, and it is a short guide. It's literally about 80 pages. <sighs> Why am I out of breath? I wish it had been a bit longer and gone a bit more in depth into things. There were a lot of quotes that I took from it and um, little nuggets of information and I liked how it brought in psychology and the science of how our brains critically look at something versus creatively and how those parts work in hand with each other. So it's definitely something that I would refer to and read over again, especially because it was so short. I am also about 80 pages of the way through The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and I'm enjoying that so far. It's interesting seeing what happened with the sisters and the dynamic that they have and how they fit into the town as a whole that they lived in as kids. Domino, what are you doing? Yeah, so I would really like to know more about Stella because at the moment we only know about Desiree and we only know things about Stella that other people have told us, so I would like a bit of time in her head as well. But because it's Monday night um, and Robert and I are both working from home, I thought that we could do this thing once a week where we have like an old school movie night and it's just a way of us to sit down and spend some quality time together and also it's a good way to mark in the week where you are because we don't leave the house very often or I do and it's for work it's really difficult to remember what day it is where I am what my name is who I am what I'm doing what is life all the big questions <laughs> so old school movie night is gonna help with that we had this on video and we had to get numerous copies this and The Lion King because my brother would watch them over and over and over again and he would at the very end he would always go like this like if you know you know um, but I wanted to watch this recently because Domino does this thing where if we have our feet up she kind of like stands on her back legs and swipes our feet or like just rubs her head against us and like that reminds me of Free Willy and she did the other day so I want to watch Free Willy that is literally my thought process when picking out films also I'm whispering because Robert is in the other room watching no, it's playing a game. Farming simulator or something, I don't know. He loves it, so as long as he's happy. Um, but I don't want him to hear what film I'm choosing because it's a secret. He only finds out once it starts playing. The Free Willy? Yeah! 
haven't seen this in years. Crying. Tears coming out of my face. Hello, it is Tuesday and I'm going to change my TBR. So originally I was going to do six books and um, I'm still going to do six books but I'm going to change one of them. So I was originally going to do Mexican Gothic for a book with green on the cover. However, I started a book the day before the readathon and I am totally in love with it and it's one that everybody knows about. It's a classic um, and I feel a bit like Joey from Friends because Beth is sick. It's Little Women. This is a book that I have started to read multiple times um, and I've never finished it and I don't know why because it's amazing and I love it. But I'm getting to the bit right near the end. So it's going to get emotional. But uh, I was just thinking about it and I won't be able to fit in Mexican Gothic and finish reading Little Mint at the same time. And the hibernation readathon is all about getting cozy and like just snuggling up and just all those kinds of vibes. And that is Little Women. It literally starts off at Christmas time. It's nearly Christmas time. I have my tree up, which you would have seen in the last clip. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Screw it. I'm definitely gonna do it. I am having so much fun with Little Women, and that is the most important thing. And I'm still gonna read Mexican Gothic. It just won't be right now. It is after midnight, and I have a reading update. Um, I just spent four hours at my grandma's because her heating was broken, but I managed to almost finish little women I've literally got 10 pages left and I don't know if I'm maybe behind the times and I didn't know this but um, spoilers I will put a timestamp down below from here on um, apparently there are two versions of little women kicking about um, the original version Louisa May Alcott ended the book with um, accepting that Meg would marry Mr. Brooke. And Beth was fine, she recovered from her scarlet fever. That was great. Um, but in the other version, it's it seems to be little women and good wives together. And I was really confused because I always thought little women ended with Beth dying. So Beth does and doesn't die in little women depending on the book that you have. And I realized this because I said to my grandma, I thought Beth died and she's like, she does. I'm like, mm, she doesn't, because she's not dead yet, and unless in the next ten pages she dies, not gonna happen. But I had also taken out the ebook so I could read at bedtime, and the audiobook so I could listen to it while I was driving, and they have like forty odd chapters when there's only twenty in Little Women, and I was wondering how can I be a third of the way through the book in a different format. When I've only got like at that point I had like a hundred pages left, so there wasn't much left at all. Um, and that has solved the mystery. So Beth does and doesn't die in the same book. It's literally like choose your own adventure, but publishing style. So it is Sunday and I have finished The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'm gonna give this one three stars. I enjoyed it. It's well written and I can see why so many people love it but for me I'm just not keen on family sagas unless they do something that really surprises me or shocks me kind of like Kate Morton I like her kind of vibe where there's always like a big huge like moment whereas this one although it explores the daughter the two sisters and their relationship and their relationships with other people and how they can be complicated particularly for Stella because she's built this whole life for herself and then that means that she has to lie for the rest of her life in order to keep this life that she's built. Just I feel like it could have been more than what it was. In places it started to dip and kind of meander along and this past couple of years my reading tastes have really changed and I'm still trying to figure out what I enjoy reading 
and what aspects of things I really like so that I can really hone in on the books that I pick up and that I buy and that I choose. But for this one, I'm glad I read it and I did really enjoy how it looks at racial identity and how it looks at the queer community and there is a trans man in this book which is fantastic and I loved his story but I wish that we'd had a little bit more of it. Because it had the full perspectives I feel like that watered down the plot for me but again I'm glad I read it. It was enjoyable for the most part and I did really like Britt Bennett's writing style so I think I will pick up something from her in the future. I'm also halfway through Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. Because the hibernation readathon finishes today, I'm not going to finish all six books. I realised that The Last Bear by Mandy Haggith isn't actually a poetry collection, it is in fact a novel. So well done on me for researching that. I also had Great Expectations by Charles Dickens to read. I wasn't really feeling another classic. But yeah, I'll give you an update once I have finished Over the Woodward Wall and we will close down this readathon TBR. No, vlog. Rebecca, it's a vlog. Hello, it is Sunday and that means it is the end of my reading vlog. I had the day off today so I thought I would just carry the hibernation readathon over another day so that I could finish Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. Like I said, it's a novella within Middle Game and it takes place in a magical world called The Up and Under which two children who live on the same street, same age, go in the same year in school, so they go to separate schools, and they walk the same street every day, have never met before, until one day they are both diverted a different way to school, and they find this huge wall which they climb over and find themselves in this fantastical world. I got major Alice in Wonderland vibes, Wizard of Oz vibes, Chronicles of Narnia vibes, all the vibes with this. So Zib and Avery could not be more different and I think that's what makes it so interesting and Shauna Maguire writes in such a lyrical and visual way that when you meet all of these strange creatures and yeah. bless you different parts of the up and under um, it's quite terrifying in places. Like, if I was a kid reading this, I would get the willies. But ultimately, it's about stepping outside of your comfort zone, finding things out about yourself that you never knew that you were capable of doing, and that not everything is cut and dry. So I get four stars, and that is the end. But I bought some new books, so I thought I would share them with you. After finishing Little Women, I then went and got Good Wives, uh, Little Men, and Joe's Boys. And I think purely because of my memory problems, I'm gonna have to just binge all three of these. I think that's the only way that I'm gonna be able to keep a series in my head. I also got The Super Foggies. This is a graphic novel and it is so freaking precious. So this is about a whole host of superheroes and supervillains who are in a retirement home called Valhalla and it is hilarious. I read the first issue and I literally was crying with laughter because it was so funny. So I'm really excited to read the full volume. This is the last time I'm hopping on but I'm giving an update about the super forkies. Yes, I just hit myself. Um, I would not recommend this book to anybody it is ableist, it is anti-semitic, it also portrays the elderly, especially those with dementia, in a horrific and disgusting way and I find that incredibly offensive. Would not recommend, do not spend £25 on it, do not recommend it to your friends, do not buy this book, ignore my recommendation. I also got Vampires Never Get Old, which is a short story collection by loads of different authors, so we've got Samir Ahmed, Danielle Clayton, Tessa Gratton, Heidi Heilig, Julie Murphy, Marcus Shiro, Rebecca Roan Horse, Laura Ruby, V.E. Schwab, Kayla Whaley, and it is edited by Zoraida Cordova and Natalie C. Parker. And the last book I have, I haven't actually unboxed it yet. This is going to be a buddy read with Chanel from If You Can Read This on Bookstagram. And look how beautiful it is. So this is, is it Piranesi? Paranesi, Paranesi, I don't know, by Susanna Clark. 
Um, I know that this is about a man who lives in a house with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of doors and corridors and um, he doesn't know how he got there, he doesn't really know much about himself and there's somebody else who lives in the house called The Other so it's meant to be really really good. So I'm looking forward to reading this one next with Chanel but thank you so much for watching my hibernation autumn edition readathon reading vlog hosted by Simon from Savage Reads and Tom from Tom Reads Things. I've loved taking part in this readathon, even though I didn't manage to read all of the books I wanted to read and cover all of the prompts I wanted to cover. It still got me to read four books in a week and they were all pretty solid books. Like Little Woman was a five star, The Vanishing Half was three stars, Creativity by John Cleese, I think I gave that four, and then Over the Woodward Wall, I would give four stars. So that is a really successful reading vlog. Thank you so much to Simon and Tom for hosting it. I am really looking forward to more editions. Um, let me know if you've read any of the books I've read or if you're interested in any of them or about the books I've hauled. Let me know in the comments down below and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.